been a long time. 30 years. If I see you in the street, I cannot recognize you. Where are you staying? Taodian, District 2. You should visit your old home. Yeah, I'm going to. You look like your picture. Thank God. I went to where we used to live. I felt like a tourist. I hardly recognize this country anymore. I remember growing up in London, every Vietnamese person that I met lost a family member here. Yeah, it took a great deal out of us, too. Generation forgotten, country divided. I had no idea that we were leaving. I went to sleep one night, and when I woke up, I was on a boat, drifted for days. My mother passed about a year ago now. Did your parents ever come back to Vietnam? Never. It must have been very painful for them not to come back. What are you scared of the ashes? We're returning them home. Why has it been so long for you to return? Welcome to this BFI at Home event. My name is Elaine Wong and I'm one of the film programmers for the BFI London Film Festival. I'm joined tonight by Hong Kao and Parker Sawyers, who, and we're here to talk about the film Monsoon. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me too, yes. Um, Hong, do you want to start off talking a little bit about this film and kind of where the origins were when you, when you came to kind of conceiving the idea for the film? Oh, yes. Um, I, I had, oh God, I've had this idea for a long time in various different shapes and forms. Um, I think, it, to be honest, it's, it's a film I've wanted to make for a long, long time about this, this struggle for, um, you know, for a sense of uh, uh, cultural and a national identity, this, this, the tug and pull between that and, and what that means. Um, and so it, in the early days, I thought, you know, maybe it was, you know, to do it in the format of the, during the Vietnam War or something along that line. Um, and it, it's kind of changed along, along the way. Um, the, the script got selected by Sundance Screenwrite, Screenwriters Lab, and they gave me a grant which allowed me to go back to Vietnam for the first time uh, when I left, uh, when I was just eight years old. So it was just... Um, and that was amazing. And I think that's when the script really changed and become, became, you know, the, the, you know, became monsoon, I guess. So you had this idea first. Um, how big of an impact did that trip back to Vietnam have on this film? So the, the, the feeling I, I the, the kind of dominant feeling I, I had going back was this, this, do you know, there's this really romantic notion that, you know, we have to go back to our birth land in order to understand it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in order to move forward and, you know, find a sense of peace or future, which is a very, is a really romantic notion. And it's a great idea. I'm, I'm not, it's not for me to criticize it, but for, for somebody like me, and I think for, for people, I think that there is a generation of people like me, you know, when you come from a, a kind of more kind of war-torn background, let's say, um, and you don't have the language, you don't have the memory to kind of grasp onto, it was very hard, and and so when I returned back to Vietnam, I, I it, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have the language, I didn't have the memory, and and the Vietnam I left in 1983 is completely a different country. When I returned, it, it was very hard to kind of hold on to. When it came to um, writing, kind of the especially kind of the um, the ethnicities of the actors and all the characters. Um, like, did you have, you know, for example, did you have Henry Golding in mind? Um, was it important um, that, obviously that um, he had that kind of... So Henry was obviously is um, Malaysian um, and British. And if, does it, how much of him and you know, the backgrounds um, of the actors and the characters were important to kind of how this film came together and, the, and those kind of layers that you talk about kind of culturally? Um, to, to be honest, I mean, when, when, when we were casting for for the character of Kit, um, 
I, I mean, uh, I, I didn't know anything about Henry. I didn't know anything about crazy rich Asian or simple favor. And uh, the, the, the most important thing for us was just to find the right actor for Kit. Because you know, this film is a very quiet film and it's a very internal journey for Kit. And it, it conveys a lot of kind of nuances and, and um, it just needed an actor that could externalize some of these struggles that he was going through. And that was, that was the most important thing for me, was just to find the right actor. Um, and when we got the tape in from Henry, there was something, I mean, there was something very exciting about Henry. It was just, um, so, you know, there, there was some reservation because I, I, there was the, 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 the kind of knee-jerk immediate reaction, which is, oh, he hadn't come from an acting background, right? Um, but we kept, I mean, I kept testing him a lot. We, we, were, but we were doing it virtually. And then eventually a lot of us felt, uh, me, the producers and the exec, we felt that there's something really exciting about Henry. So I flew out to LA to meet him and we spent a day uh, working on uh, a handful of scenes. And I think that's when I, it, it, really, uh, it really worked for me, just seeing it. Because I think he, what Henry was able to do was when he was accessing certain um, feelings, it felt very honest to me. And, it, and it was the kind of, that was the kind of style of acting that I, I was kind of looking for for this film. And it didn't come across as arched or mannered, and um, yeah, and and you know we we to be honest, we yeah I, we had no idea that um, he was going to be the, you know the Henry Golding that he is now. For you as a director, um, how important was it that we just had these moments where the audience were just you know it's almost observational. You you you're watching it. You know things things play out. Yeah, I mean that that was always my intention. I I really wanted us to kind of be with him and to, to have this observational quality, but not from afar. So you're, you're just, the best way to say it is I, 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 I feel like I wanted the audience to be, for us to be a couple of steps behind him, but, to, but still that, that when he goes through these very kind of maybe heartfelt moment, that we would feel it alongside him, you know? It wasn't from uh, watching from afar. I wanted, I, I wanted that, that, I want, I, I don't know, it's, it sounds so pretentious, but I, I think I really wanted the experience of watching the film to be very similar to the experience Kit was going through. Sure. Um, and Parker, to come to you, um, again, you, your character is in times, um, in the interactions you have with Kit, it's, you're almost kind of watching him and his journey and a lot of kind of those early um, conversations that you have between your two characters. You know, it's, there are things that you're not giving away and that he's not giving away. Yeah, I mean, um, I was just thinking actually, <laughs> that year, I think 2018 or something like that. Yeah, 2018. I kept playing people who had transplanted. Like I did a TV show, I did a movie, I did another TV show, I did another TV show. And each character was somebody who moved away from their homeland. And then, um, and then wherever the film or whatever was set, moved there. Um, and I remember moving from America to London 12 years ago. And that feeling, that feeling of isolation and my college didn't mean anything, my uni, you know, it didn't mean anything, my background meant nothing. Um, and so you do feel alone and you're almost rendered numb as a result. You're just like, okay, what do I do? Um, and so, yeah, I think when Lewis meets Kit, he recognizes that. He's like, I know what, I know what you're going through. I, I mean, a little bit. Kit's coming back to his home, his homeland, but that feeling of being overwhelmed and saying like, what, what am I doing here? Um, so I think Lewis is kind of like, here, I'll take you under my wing um, and show you around a bit mm -hmm. and make you fall in love with me at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really interesting um, that your character, Parker, is, you, you very much, you know, it, it's, a, it's a Vietnam that you know, um, but then there is, obviously very heavy references to the, to the war and also your father and his experiences. And like I said, there is, you know, there's only an, for a whole, there's a very little dialogue, but it's, it, but it's there. You kind of, you feel it that, that very early on in the film. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I mean, the traits that we pick up, the habits we pick up from our parents or grandparents, and we don't know where it comes from. You know what I mean? Like I, I always think I bite my nails to groom. I know probably disgusting, but my father did it and my grandmother did it. And then I think like, oh, maybe my grandmother is too poor to afford 
nail clippers. And so then she does it. So then my father did it. Now I do it. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So when, when you see it on screen, you see these two people, you're like, so where did that come from? Why this reservedness or why, why is he kind of testing them out, feeling them out and not letting everything go? Has he learned that? Is that from his father who clammed it all up for Lewis? That he clammed it all up and so he's learned to just sort of wait it out, let the other person speak first or tease it out of them and, and tread delicately, you know? Um, so I think you're seeing probably two or three generations in that person, you know? I mean, it is, as we naturally do. As a script, um, for kind of actors who are kind of Vietnamese and based in Vietnam and working in Vietnam, how does this, this story, um, how did, you know, how they respond to this story? Um, and what was kind of their, what, what did they bring to it and how important they think that this story was to tell to kind of like an international audience? Uh, interesting question. Um, I mean, I mean, we haven't screened, I mean, so we haven't screened a film in Vietnam, so we, we can't really have a, 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 a more detailed idea. But I think what, what was really interesting is, so a lot of the Vietnamese crew and some of the actors have, have the, the, the kind of, the, the dominant thing they said was that they found it a breath of fresh air because they felt, so a lot of foreign production that goes to, that come, that goes into Vietnam to do, to, to make a film, they tend to be always about um, a period piece or a period piece specifically about the Vietnam War. So even though the Vietnam War permeates the story of Monsoon, it was a modern piece and they found it quite exciting. So we were shooting, so we were shooting Saigon as this ambitious, thriving metropolis, you know, that's going through this incredible transition and that we weren't, we weren't showing the city as this victim and it was they were very uh, some some of the crews have they found that really exciting from just from my conversation sure i mean i remember even kind of from the opening um scene where you have that kind of aerial shot um, of the city it's, it it is it's a, it's a side of the you know the city that you would never think and the kind of the it's so much movement but yet so much stillness in that initial shot yeah and, and that, that was the, the the idea the so the Ben came up with that with that shot, and it was a brilliant, brilliant shot. And it was just the, the idea, the opening scene. It, it was um, the idea I wanted was to start on cars, right? So you could you feel like you're in any, you could be in any city, and then as as the as as the frame becomes bigger and you see more and more of the city, and you start seeing the moped, then you start to get a sense that actually we're not in the Western world; that we're we're probably somewhere in. Southeast Asia or the Far East or something like that, where there are a lot of mopeds. So that it was the it was the idea was to to kind of lull you into a false sense and then slowly bring uh, the information in. Um, I like that Parker for your character as well. You know, you are you know you're very integrated into the city in the in the way of life. Then also, and then you drive a moped yourself. <laughs> well, slow down. I don't drive a moped. It's a motorcycle, and I learned there in vietnam how to how to drive a motorcycle barely man it was that was stressful so i went out in the 98 degree heat i don't know you can transfer to celsius you know 98 100 degree heat trying to learn from this guy who does not speak english i don't speak vietnamese he spoke a little bit of french i speak a little bit of french i was like Ale. he goes we oui. i go okay i almost fell several times and then while we were filming henry was making fun of me he was because he rides like dirt bikes he does everything he rides dirt bikes. Anyway, and then I was like jerking. I don't know. I don't know how Hong cut it together, but sure, Lewis rides a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was hard, from what, yeah, from watching the film, we would never have known that you were a first timer. Well, no, it's hard. It's scary and exhilarating. It was amazing. We, we really plunge our actors right into those elements. I mean, it, it really, yeah, we really, I mean, we couldn't. Like we couldn't really close the street or anything like that. And we literally plunged them into the element. And I think it gave the film this um, a, a kind of a, a richness, you know? And it, I think it made the film look far more um, expensive than it actually was. Yeah, but also I will say, Hong told me before we filmed, he was like, he goes, oh yeah, do you know how to ride a motorbike? I was like, no, nah, man, I can figure it out then. He goes, cool. Cause we might get some shots on the street. And I go, yeah, okay, fine. I'd never been there. I get there and I was like, hey man, I am not riding on, I'm not riding on this street. What's wrong with you? What? Oh, it was crazy. Anyway, 
We didn't do it on the street, like on the street street. What were your experiences, um, you know, for the research, re reactions? So not so much when you're filming, but kind of the day to day where you're there. Um, and then also when you were to explain to them what this film was and who your character was. Walking around Ho Chi Minh, like it was like the anonymity. Nobody seemed to care at all. Everybody was so busy going somewhere, walk right past you. I am 6'4", black, and I think good looking. And I thought people would look at me and they didn't. And so I thought, you know, that was really strange. Um, but then kind of, kind of like a meditation almost, like you can just be yourself, walk how you want, walk where you want, eat what you want. I would eat by myself. I loved it. Just watching people go back and forth. So I mean, being there, if I could, I don't know, I wanted to take the family there, but you know, COVID and so forth. And so I, I would love to visit again. There was something very peaceful about it, I guess, but I have a very, my mind races. So I think the chaos of the city matches it. You know what I mean? So I calm. It makes me very calm. I loved, I loved them in that. I mean, would there be a monsoon sequel, perhaps, where we, where we find out more about Lewis's story? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I doubt it. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, it, it, maybe it can become a musical or something. Yeah. Yeah, and if you can afford Henry. I don't know. He's probably <laughs> quoting 2.5 film now. I'm like, all right. But it's interesting what you said. I think Vietnam doesn't, um, the people, I mean, Vietnam is this incredible city. Uh, Saigon was this incredible city where people are working so hard, right? They're literally just working from day to night. And, and for us coming from the West, and the minute you land in Saigon, you know, the, the, the first thing is, you, I think we tend to think of the most recent conflict, which was the, the Vietnam-American conflict. But for a lot of the younger generation, it just, they, don't, they don't even think about it, they don't, they don't care. It's only when you speak to their parents, the older generation, is, do you start to, to hear those really tough stories. And How important do you think um, is that this story is told and do you think, it, what kind of impact do you think it will have on communities? Oh God, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the impact and I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, hope, I hope people can connect with it and it can chime and it can resonate with them. Uh, I, I, I can't, I mean, I, I can't really prophesy how, how it will, what it will do. But I, I do, I mean, what I can say is that, you know, I remember when I was still writing it and we were still, it was, it was go, we were going through a really, and we are still going through this really difficult period where, you know, it was, then it was Brexit and America was just having its election. So Trump was coming in and there was a lot of talk about uh, immigrations and refugees and but but there was never any discussion about it it was very polemic it was very polarizing so um, so you know I, I think in some ways maybe monsoon was my I, I wanted to put maybe a, a more of a human story to it. you know why people choose to uh, go through such trauma to take a whole family and relocate into another place it's not something you wake up and you just decide to do that. And, and that, was, that was a discussion that, that, that never really took place and still doesn't take place because the minute you talk about it, 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 it just becomes very um, um, kind of polarizing. Um, I think also um, what really struck me was um, just the, the moments kind of, a lot of what isn't said um, in the script. I remember the, um, I mean, when, um, uh, when character of Kit, is on that train and someone asks him, where, where are you from? It, it takes him just a little bit longer to answer it and he almost gives an answer that he, he feels like he's expected to give um, in that kind of, so how important was it you to work in those kind of moments into the script? Um, so, um, I mean, those are really, I mean, those are the little kind of personal nuances that I like the film to have. Uh, and, um, but you know, within that, I, there is, you know, there's still a, a kind of hopefully a, a, a stronger framework of what what Kit's journey is. Um, so, I mean, I I I love doing stuff like that in storytelling. I just don't. Um, I, I I think it's you know I think some people hopefully some people will take some things from it and some people I don't know will take other things from it. Hopefully, I, I don't know. It's it's just it's just my. I, I, I like doing that. It's, it's just kind of something I really enjoy doing. Wait, can I chime in? So, I mean, as an African-American, when I moved over here, people, uh, I guess, Black British will ask me where I'm from. 
and it took me years to figure out they're asking where I'm like Jamaica or Nigeria where I'm from but because I'm African American and slavery and so forth now when I get the question I'm just like oh uh I don't know you know what I mean and so when I watched the film and I heard that question that's what that's where my mind went and yeah. so it's beautiful in there because it is it's layered and it's just like Indiana that's as far as we know you know what I mean yeah no, no, I mean, I think that's a really good point. I, I think it's just, so when I was writing this, you know, one thing, there was a, des there's a lot of thing I wanted to do with this film. There's a desire to, to I think there was a desire to readdress maybe or rebalance. Um, uh, so, you know, the dominant the, the kind of, I think America has been a dominant perspective about the Vietnam War, right? And, and I think there was, a, there was my desire to maybe address some of that. And, but the, the fear always in me was that in wanting to readdress it or, or, or offer another perspective, that I didn't want it to, be, to become, you know, this didactic and this kind of polemic thing like, no, 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 you, you're wrong and this is how it should have happened. And it, 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 then I enter this territory that I, I, I start to kind of, I get a bit fearful. I, that's the last thing I want the film to do. And sometimes I, I haven't, I, I've maybe my, my instinct is to then, bring in some of these or pepper the film with these nuances that are more open to interpretation, such as what, what Parker just said. Um, and how important was it um, for you, for um, Kit's character? That Kit is, um, obviously that we, we, you know, we, we find out very early on um, that um, obviously he's interested um, in Lewis and um, Parker's character, but the sexuality isn't, sexuality is never a discussion point in the film. How intentional was that? Uh, it was always intentional. Uh, it was, I think that was something I really wanted to do. So I wanted, I wanted these, I wanted the character of Lewis and Kit to be absolutely comfortable in their sexuality. And I think what, what they were struggling through or what, what, what they are struggling with was a, a, a sense of uh, a, 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 a search for an identity. And I think the character of Lewis is, I would see him as something, as somebody that's maybe a few years more ahead of Kit. Um, and I think in, in, I always, I, it was kind of, I don't know, it's so weird when you explain too much, I think you, you take them, you suck the mystery out of it, but um, it was my, it was kind of my way of wanting to celebrate that, because I, I wanted to celebrate that they, you know, that these two people have no problem with their sexuality, and that it, 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 it was more of the, I didn't want the sexual politics to be a part of that, but in doing that, I feel like it's my way of commenting is my way of celebrating that as well at the same time. I hope that makes sense. I don't know. Um, Parker, for you, when you first read the script on Monsoon, kind of, was that your re reading as well? Yeah, I mean, ironically, or I guess, Kismet? No, I don't know what it is. But uh, I wrote a short story in, when I was in uni, and the main character was homosexual, but it wasn't explored. And it was a really good story. And everybody, the whole class loved it, and my professor loved it. And but the question that popped up afterwards was like, well, why didn't you explore, you know, his gayness? And I go, it doesn't matter. If I said his eyes were brown or blue, or if he had the David, uh, the David Bowie thing, where it's like one is, you know what I mean? I was like, if I said that, would I have to talk the entire story about it? And so when I read it, I loved it. I go, well, this is exactly like now we're getting into his family. Now we're getting into the longing to. Uh, connect to your homeland, connect to your culture. What does that mean? What was my father going through when he was my age? That when he was raising me, he was acting this way and this way and this way. And then ultimately, you know, um, so I love it because you can focus on the other things in somebody's life that are as important to them. And so let's explore that. Um, so yeah, I love that part of the script. How long did it take you to say yes to the script when you first received it? Uh, it was about three years. I mean, they really had to hunt me down, you know what I mean? Like they had to offer the money and the perks and the benefits and, no, I'm just joking. It was like, no, I wanted it right when I went in. I, I tend not to go in for things if I don't really want it, but this one specifically. And then, I don't know, man, I really like Hong. And so when I met him, I was like, oh yeah, this would be cool. Um, and then schedule wise, it kind of jumped around. So I was so happy it worked out, but no, I just wanted it. It was my father was in Vietnam, he was in the Navy. He passed in 06. Um, I have double knee surgery. 
I have scars on my legs and the script, oh, I think we cut out that part, but in the script, it said that they, he traces over scars and Lewis's legs. And I was just like, oh my God. So it kind of just, it just linked up with me. I, I just, I love the story and I love films like this. I just, I wanted to be in one, you know? Um, did you actually audition the actors together, Tom? Um, so both um, Henry and Parker? No, um, no, we didn't. We, 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 we saw Parker with another person that we were looking at. And uh, I think it was, I think they call it chemistry test or something like that. And, um, and, um, but uh, it, uh, unfortunately it didn't, it didn't work out for this other guy. And, uh, but we were really, I mean, you know, I remember me and Tracy was very excited about Parker, but we, we couldn't set, do or say anything until we found our kit because everything, had to be built around kit. And, you know, like, you know, when you get somebody as good looking as Parker, you can't, you know, you can't give Parker a, not a good looking boyfriend really. So it's just kind of, <laughs> so he kept insisting that I have to have a good looking boyfriend. <laughs> so and, uh, so it, it, I think, you know, it, it all worked out quite well at the end. So. That is not true. However, <laughs> I was just finishing up on a thing in Australia and then, you know, and then I get the email like, hey, so Henry Golding, by the way, and I was like, okay, looked him up. I was showing people on set. I was like, yo, look, this, yo, look at him. He's so cute. He was on Ellen. Like he had a super early interview before Crazy Rich Asians. And then, yeah. And then when we got there and I met him, he's super charming. He's very calm, like genuinely. He did this thing with his motorcycle one day and he stayed calm. And I was like, okay, you're genuinely a calm person. Um, and then he showed me the trailer to Crazy Rich Asians and I go, oh honey you're gonna be famous and he was like what i go yeah that looks like a good movie you're gonna be famous <laughs> and voila so i think i had a hand in his uh success <laughs> <laughs> that's great to hear and um, how long was the rehearsal process um did you rehearse kind of in london ahead of time or was it going to have a lot of kind of rehearse time in vietnam before you shot um we i mean my i i didn't my rehearsal, I would say, was probably with Parker in the early part of that audition. And we talked about uh, the character a lot then. Uh, the rehearsal was mainly in Vietnam. So it was mainly with Henry um, and Henry and the, the David Tran, who played his second cousin. Um, yeah, so there, there, were, there, were, there, there were moments. I mean, there were, yeah, we had rehearsal time. But you know, in this type of film, it's never as long as you want it to be, right? Because just, you know, everything is like, you're kind of swimming against the tide a bit during prep. But also the chemistry read, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, that was like six hours or something. It was long, it was like all day. Yeah, and so, really yeah, it was pretty good rehearsal. It was, I was like, I think I got the character after. Yeah, it was intense. Six, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense. Uh, yeah, it was like six hours, something like that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, it's good. Um, and how long was the shoot um, altogether in Vietnam? Uh, altogether, it was uh, I, uh, 30 days. Uh, the shoot was 30 days. Uh, but I don't know how long Parker was there for. Three, two, three weeks, something like that. Uh, yeah, it was a blur. Man, that place is very hot. It's wonderful. When I left, my skin was looking good, but man, it was like, um, I don't know, like a bewildering trip, if you will. It was just, uh, it was just really, really hot. I didn't sleep very well, and so, but I feel like if I lived there, I'd probably be the same. But I felt fine, like I had energy. But I just, I remember anyway. you found it quite um, maybe um, disorientating. I think, I think all the insects were kind of like scaring you a bit. Oh yeah, I don't like insects. I don't like things that scurry, anything like that. So, you know, like in the heat you know there's like the bugs get bigger parker doesn't like that so i was uh <laughs> i was i don't know i survived it it was great but i did love it i loved the city i loved the chaos of it it didn't feel like chaos to me and then the only thing is like when i go how do you cross the road so i met up with henry um i landed like 6 30 in the morning got in the hotel tried to take a nap and henry and i, henry and I went to go get lunch or something like that and he's cool he's just like Hey, mate, like this is his jacket, you know. Hello, hello, mate. Like, hello. And then he was, I was like, How do we cross the road? He goes, You know, just walk, just, just, just walk. They'll stop. And I go, What? 
sure enough, like a magic trick. I felt like I was walking with David Blaine. Just walk, man. Anyway, it was uh, so it was a lot of yeah, like the learning curve, but I learned quickly. I like the city. Okay. And um, so before we finish up, um, if I could just end by asking, what are your, what are you up to next? What is the next big project? Um, Parker, I'll start with you. Um, sure. If you can talk about uh, it. <laughs> no, I can. I mean, I've done a couple films. I guess are, I just finished one. I just finished one. We just did one in COVID, which was interesting. Vanessa Redgrave and her daughter, and I play. I don't know. It's called The Lost Girls. It's about Peter Pan, but more about trauma. Uh, and so how Wendy and her granddaughter and her daughter deal with Peter Pan visiting them or something like that. And I played the husband, like a suffering husband. Um, and then I got a film coming up, I think, to do in the first, like literally the first of the year. I can't talk about that. And then I got a season two. Now I got to go film in the States next year for Pea Valley, which is a critically acclaimed show, 100% Rotten Tomatoes, what are you gonna do? Um, and so I go back for that next year. So it'll be busy next year. You know how this was this year, you know. It's good to be busy. Um, Hong, sure. what about you? Uh, I'm actually about to direct, um, we're about to shoot in four weeks, um, the second series of Baptiste for BBC. So it's a TV thing and it's during COVID with all the COVID protocols and social distancing and. And it's quite scary. So that has uh, Fiona Shaw and Chucky Cairo in it. So that's what I'm on next, yeah. Great. Um, and what is Henry up to next? Does anyone know? Oh, God. Henry probably has a six picture deal <laughs> somehow. <laughs> the Godfather makes Goodfellas, makes Forrest Gump. And it's going to make him the biggest thing ever. No, I don't know what he's going to do, but he's... I mean, I think, I, I don't know if they filmed it. Is he not in G.I. Joe? Is he G.I. Joe? Uh, he's, he's got, like, I'm sure he's in five films. Or... Yeah, yeah. So he's got Snake Eyes coming out. I don't know, man, because of COVID. So I, I guess next year. Um, and then I know that Crazy Rich Asians is supposed to be a trilogy, I think. I think. Right. I mean, based on the books. So then I think he's got that going for him. But I'm sure he's very, very busy. But he really is, I will say, I'll speak on his behalf. Super duper nice guy. When I was working on set last year in Atlanta, um, one of the ADs was a huge fan of his. She told me that in the beginning of filming. Five months later, I was, she was leaving a week before we finished. And I was like, oh, all right, Henry. And he made this wonderful video for her. And she literally just knelt down and like almost cried when I sent it to her. And I was just like, oh my gosh. He's a real star. Oh my god! Um, so yeah, he's he's mad cool, super nice guy. Yeah, really. definitely a star. And um, that is all we've got time for tonight. I'm afraid. Um, thank you, Hong. Thank you, Parker, for joining us. Thank no you. Problem. Monsoon is available now to rent on BFI Player and is also screening at BFI South Bank. If you enjoyed this event, please consider donating to the BFI. We're a charity, and our venues were closed for a long time during lockdown. So your support keeps us going. Thanks for watching and good night.